in 2005, but Dave Mikal, Mark from Poland, and myself, we were working in the nonprofit sector in uh, in the U.S. and we realized that there wasn't any good web-based open source software for nonprofits. And because Mikal uh, was from Poland, he knew about more about Europe than we did, and we knew that it was a problem both in the U.S. and in Europe. So we knew we had two huge continents to work with, and we embarked on this journey of building a free and open source software that could cater to nonprofits and it was built for the community and by the community and what we did early on was um, before we even wrote a single line of code we had this mailing list and and to give credit to some of the predecessors before CVCRM there was this software called eBase uh, which was a FileMaker Pro software. It was quite a, it was a desktop-based software way before the internet uh, came into being, and um, and the folks at eBase wanted to do eBase Enterprise, which was the web-based form. And since we wanted to build a community, our goal was let's make it open to everyone. And the eBase folks were some of our strongest collaborators. So what we did was we had a mailing list of I think between 10 to 20 to 30 people, and we went about and did a lot of discussion on what we wanted, why we wanted, what were the main features of the software. And luckily for us, that was also during the US elections. And so elections kind of helped drive a lot of the contact management functionality. And they may or may not have provided us some funding early on. So it came about due to this really nice confluence of factors of um, a good group of people, developers who knew the nonprofit world really well. Both Dave and myself and even Mikhail didn't really know the nonprofit world. We knew the nonprofit world, but I think you have to understand and empathize and be within the nonprofit world. And I think the only smart thing that we knew that was we knew that we didn't know enough about the nonprofit world to make the decision. So we got a lot of these nonprofit people together, and we built the software as a community. We listened to them and. Um, and we just started churning out monthly releases and we'd say, okay, what should we do next? So it was this really nice interchange, a really nice give and take between the community and us. And um, one of the things which I've always believed in 20 years ago and I still believe in today is um, if you can respond in 24 hours or less, like that makes people come back. That makes people realize that, hey, someone is listening to me. Because the thing that I fear the most is when you throw a question or you're curious or you run into a problem and you throw it into this black box of the internet, if you don't hear back, it's really frustrating. It's like, is anyone even doing this? Does anyone even care? And I wanted Civi to have this caring feeling, this community feeling where people really will build and support each other. So that, to some extent, was the origins of uh, Civi CRM. It was all organic, there was absolutely no marketing, there was no uh, advertising. It means obviously as an open source project, uh, you don't have too much, you don't actually, you, you, we did have the money, but we didn't have the marketing people on staff and everything. But we were, again, the other smart thing that we did was, we did attend conferences that were specific to non-profits, we did attend conferences that were specific to open source developers doing like things like Drupal and WordPress and Joomla, and we associated ourselves with those communities where a lot of nonprofits needed both websites and contact databases and I think that helped us really grow right uh, but being a presence in all the events like even though we didn't have a marketing budget very similar to this like hey we'll have a really simple booth we'll have the community helping us uh, really helped us market it and we had some really early successes we had some of the largest um, technical nonprofits in the US um, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Creative Commons, Wikimedia, uh, Free Software Foundation, Amnesty in, um, in the UK, the Green Party, all across the world. So very early on, because of our open source nature, we managed to attract some really big names. And I think that gave us uh, quite a bit of a buzz.
we've always got to think of it in two different ways, right? Why is open source important to us? And what are we trying to do with the ecosystem? And now FOSDEM is a really great example, right? If you look at FOSDEM, right? And if you look at the number of NGO-focused talks or NGO-related talks, and I think I went through the list and I found one, right? Which was a one lightning talk on open all the talk, right? And, I, and okay, maybe I might have, if I find one, I might have skipped three, right? So there are basically four talks out of 200 talks or 2,000 talks, which is a really small number, right? So again, but from an NGO perspective, like most NGOs are really small. I'm not talking about the Amnesties and the Mozilla's and the Wikipedia's who know about open source, but most of our user base does not know about open source and they don't really care about open source, right? They care about the problems that they solve. So we as an organization, we as a product, we should be focused on solving their problems. Now the flip side of the question is how do we as an organization solve this problem, right? And so our theory and our religion is open source because by open source we means that we can get other collaborators, other companies to work with us to create this platform that solves problems for a lot of NGOs, for a lot of our end users. So I think our, if, even though our religion is open source and we want to get a lot of the companies and the collaborative ecosystem of developers to develop using open source and everything, with an NGO believes or understands and knows about open source may not be as important to them. It's important for us to realize is that they want their problem solved and it should be our focus and our mission to solve their problem and not emphasize too much on the open source aspect of it. It's good for us to educate them but our number one priority should be solve their problem because that's what's important.